All right, full metal jacket ammo test. I've had quite a few requests to test stuff like this over the years, and I've really never really gotten around to it other than a few snub nose tests with some weak rounds, like 32 long, stuff like that, you know, out of short barrels. But I decided to come out today with my full-size handguns, and the reason why I picked these is because they, all of them, have about four inches of bullet nose to muzzle travel, very fair guns to use against each other in this sort of test. So what I want to test is 45 ACP 230 grain ball, uh, 40 Smith and Wesson 180 grain full metal jacket flat point, nine millimeter 124 grain full metal jacket, and 38 special 130 grain flat point full metal jacket. And I've never really seen a legitimate test of this. I hear a lot of people say a lot of different things. They're saying, you know, 45 is the best because, and they give a reason. They all fall to the ball. You know, it's bigger and slower, so it's not going to penetrate as far. And 9 millimeter always over penetrates. And, but yeah, I've never really seen any legitimate testing on that. So I'm going to test all of these compared to each other. And then I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to run around of this 124 grain 9 millimeter HSD. It's plus P and a 5 inch barrel to kind of give a baseline of something to compare to. So I am going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy these different calibers can provide. And then I'm going to do my clear ballistics gel test. And I feel like this is probably the, the, the most realistic way to test something like this because I'm using a quarter inch medium density fiber board. It's not too hard. It's not too soft. It's a little harder than like pine, but it's, uh, you know, thinner. I feel like it gives a real world representation of like ribs or sternum. So we're going to go through um, about three inches of clear ballistics. I'm going to use denim for that HST because uh, that's pretty much standard, but we won't need it for the ball ammo. So three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch medium density fiber board, and then we're going to stop and, and, and these hopefully stop them in this child block. Typically, this takes away about two inches of this. So it does provide a little bit of resistance, like a real world simulation. But we should see with our nine millimeter HST, you know, where that's at. And that'll give us kind of a good comparison. And then I'll probably shoot from 25 yards or so just to kind of see some practical accuracy at these rounds. So... Enough talk, let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our nine millimeter. I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. I'm gonna run a couple of rounds of HST first, uh, just as our baseline of power. And that's one thing to take into consideration is typically defensive ammo and nine millimeter is plus P. Uh, I, it's very rare to have ball ammo that's plus P unless it's like Buffalo bore underwood or something like that. So here's our HST 124 grain plus P. 1257, 1262. Now here is our target federal uh, 124 grain. 1132, 1171, 1141, 1145, 1130. So relatively consistent. I'll give it that and accurate. So let's move on to a different caliber. All right, 40 Smith & Wesson, we have some Blazer 180 grain flat point full metal jacket. Most 40 full metal jacket is flat point, so let's see what we got. 1013. 1012. 994. 988. 997, relatively consistent again. Let's move on to something else. All right, 45 ACP Winchester White Box, 230 grain ball ammo. Let's see how this does. 856. 41. 831. 851. 852, so pretty much standard for what you'd expect out of a five inch barrel. So let's try our 38 special and see how that does. All right, Winchester white box, 130 grain, full metal jacket. Let's see how this does. 828, 850, 874, 870, 849. So a little bit less consistent with one of those rounds, but overall, 
Obviously the lowest recoil, less than even that nine millimeter. So let's hit our ballistics gel block, starting with that HST, and then we'll see how these ball rounds will compare going through that uh, medium density fiberboard into our ballistics gel. All right, first up, we have our HST hollow point kind of as our control. I'm gonna kind of hit dead center with this and go around the rest with the full metal jacket, kind of like a five on a dice. So let's see what I can get here. Right center with this HST. All right, so what we're looking at is pretty standard performance. We hit our damage path at about 12 and a half. We have to kind of count about two inches for this, so about 14 and a half. Good expansion. That's pretty much what you want to see. Now let's move on to our full metal jacket 9mm and we'll see how that compares. All right, we have our full metal jacket 9mm, 124 gram, same weight as the HST. We'll see how this does. A lot less recoil. And I don't see a bullet. Looks like a, it just barely hit the, the, the second block and passed out. So let me hit again um, a little bit next to that. And we'll see if I can get a better shot here. So here we go, nine millimeter FMJ. <laughs> and what we're looking at is definitely massive amount of over penetration. We're looking at, you know, 30 inches, which would be about 32 inches comparison to you know, your typical, um, equation however you know deep in there we're starting to see a lot of damage possibly tumbling so what we're seeing is damage isn't necessarily less than the hollow point um, but definitely over penetration so let's move on to something else all right 40 smith and wesson i'll go below the fmj nine millimeters see what we get with this All right, uh, complete pass through, and we are in the block. We're not out the edge or anything. So that's even more penetration than the um, Remington HTP ammo I had. Some people said, well, it's just like a full metal jacket, but well, that was lighter, so it's hard to compare, but that stopped, you know, right around here after going through MDF. So uh, not quite the same as an unexpanded hollow point, in my opinion. Now let's try our 45 ball. That's the one people say absolutely has to stop less in less distance than the nine millimeter. We'll see if it does. All right, 45 ball. We got our typical uh, target ammo. So let's see what we get. Right. So did we get less penetration than the nine millimeter? Yes. Not as much apparent damage. Definitely a little bit straighter path because it has more momentum based on its bullet weight. But what we're seeing here is, you know, rather than 30 inches for the nine millimeter, we're at 29 and a quarter. So I don't know. I, I'm not really seeing anything here that looks better than the nine, in my opinion. So let's try the 38 special. All right, 38 special. I'll go above that. See what we get with this full metal jacket. All right, I don't. That look looks like it went all the way through complete pass through that's surprising i was not expecting to see a 38 go through that and it's kind of hard to see with our our bullet path but it looks roughly the same damage as our 45 except once we get to this point um you don't see a whole lot but we see a path coming out right here it zipped right through all of that I was definitely not expecting that. So I guess if we look at this, our, our quote unquote winner, if you want to call it that, is going to be 
the 45 auto and that's just talking penetration though honestly what i'm looking at our penetration is only three quarter inches more with the nine millimeter and there's a lot more damage in there so as much as i don't want to admit it the nine millimeter kind of won this uh so let's shoot from 25 yards because you know what um you know terminal performance isn't everything if you can't hit anything with what what you're aiming aiming at uh that might matter so let's let's try and i generally measure bullets but i don't need to in this because we only got one hollow point and what we're looking at is what we typically get you know this is roughly half inch probably 0.50 to 55 caliber that's typically what we get with our hollow point hsts nine millimeter uh maybe a slight nose deformation but not a whole lot or 45 it's a little bit more flattened than it was so slight deformations which may have caused tumbling versus a truly expanded hollow point so that nine millimeter hollow point is a lot bigger around than even that 45 and way way bigger around and causing more damage than you know an expanded nine millimeter all right 25 yards 38 special and my 686 Let's see how this does I pulled one moving kind of fast. Uh, let's try something else. All right, nine millimeter. I'm gonna do the same thing, basically get a sight picture and just try to place a few rounds as quickly as possible. Pretty easy. Let's move on to our 40. All right, 40 caliber. Let's see how this does for me. feel myself hesitate a little bit more on that than the 9 millimeter, uh, but, you know, did okay. Let's try our 45. All right, 45 auto. Let's see how this does. Uh, not a whole lot different. That first shot, I didn't even mean to pop off. <laughs> I, I've had that issue with this trigger. <clears throat> I'm just not used to it after shooting the longer creep of the, of the revolvers and the other pistols, but... Hey, it did all right. I'm going to move back all the way back to 75 yards. I think that would be kind of fun uh, just to kind of see what these are capable of. All right, 75 yards from my target. I'm going to start up with the 38 Special, see if I can hit at that distance. Takes a minute to get there. Uh, a couple more rounds here. I don't know what happened there. I kept the same point of aim, so uh, let's try something else. All right, here's our 40 caliber. See how this does for me. Let me try something else. All right, 45 HCP. See how this does. All right, not too bad. Let's try the nine millimeter. All right, nine millimeter.
right, so I was expecting to do a lot better with my accuracy with a nine millimeter. Now, after shooting that 45, this felt like it had half the recoil of that 45, honestly. But I've seen this phenomenon happen. We saw it with the 38 and the nine millimeter is when the bullets are a little bit lighter, it just seems like something happens in the wind at that extreme distance. But when they're a little bit heavier, like we saw at the 45, not so much. And we also have a lot more retained energy downrange with the 45. So overall here, it's kind of hard to really say which one is the best, best, best. But if we combined my overall accuracy at 25 and 75 with the gel testing, it looks like the 45 did edge out just a little bit in this test. Um, our flat point. 40 and and 38 as expected they really over penetrated that's what flat points do but 38 and 40 typically is flat point when you go full metal jacket now you can get 38s in a round nose but just as much or maybe even more often they're flat nose nine millimeter though nine millimeter did okay so it looks like in this test the nine millimeter and the uh 45 are the only things that really did the best and it's kind of a trade-off because our nine millimeter felt like it had a lot less recoil. So the average person could definitely do better with a nine millimeter than a 45, but, and, 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 and you know, a, a person that's kind of middle of the road and training kind of like me, it looks like 45 is going to be your best option here. So that's what you get. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.